Hello everyone, Bill Coyle here with more Travel Agent Tips. Thank you so much for watching Travel Agent Tips. We hope that you're gleaning a lot from it. We're truly honored that some of our new travel advisors here at KHM have joined because of watching Travel Agent Tips. So today we're here to discuss the LGBTQ plus community when it comes to travel in the industry. And we're honored to have Matt Walgren from our education team, as well as a top producer here at KHM Travel Group. Matt, thanks so much for being with us. Hey Bill, thanks for having me. You know, I have a lot of clients in the LGBTQ plus community because I'm part of that community. So it's only natural. We're all very different, we like different things. We want to travel differently, but when it comes to travel, there are certain concerns that we all have that are specific to our community. So let's talk about those, Matt. I think that it's important that, that our agents understand what the concerns and the thoughts are from the LGBTQ plus community and how we can make them feel comfortable when it comes to travel. Well, we wanna feel welcome where we're going. You know, in the past there were places we might show up and maybe we didn't feel welcome or we felt that someone was discriminating against us because we showed up with our partner like, oh, what's going on here? Don't wanna be made fun of or gawked at or anything. Um, we wanna feel safe and uh, we just wanna have fun and so explore. So there was a time before you became a travel agent that you may have traveled and um, it was that idea that says, oh my gosh, am I gonna know what I need to know before I arrive in this destination? at this resort, on this cruise line, and now you're a travel agent, right? You're a travel advisor who's advising the community. How is it different in your mind? How are you correlating better to an LGBTQ community now that you're a travel agent? Well, I think I'm a lot well-traveled than when I was first starting to travel, so there's that, but I'm also speaking to others who are traveling, where they're going, what it was like, how they felt, did they feel safe? It's just being more plugged in. And, you know, I recall um, in, in our experience as a travel agency years ago, we wanted to get into the LGBTQ community, right? We wanted to attract that clientele and we weren't good at it, right? We just didn't do a good enough job of it. How has being in the LGBT community helped you learn to book travel for that community and market to them um, and understand what their needs and desires are? I think, uh that nowadays it's all about just showing that you care and that you are an ally and that you want to support them and I think the word ally is critical here, right? But it's more than just a month of rainbows, right? There's so much more to travel. Uh, how do we keep it going throughout the entire year? Right. So, I mean, to kind of speak a little bit more about the marketing point, you know, there's these gay pride events all over the country, right? Even maybe even in small towns and local communities. So that's one point where you could uh, market yourself, you could sponsor. Oftentimes they give you a table to sponsor it, but that's just one event, one month. So if you wanna show that you care and you are an ally, well, you wanna use diverse images in your collateral and your marketing, in your social media, in your brochures. As a KHM agent, we provide this for you on the portal, so that's a great resource. There's a lot of suppliers that will provide it as well. You know, all clients wanna feel seen but this can make a huge difference in the LGBTQ plus community. These are very, very important. And I love that we have using inclusive language. I think that that's important as well. And give us an example of how that goes. Well, you might say couples or partners, right? Instead of husband and wife, you might say parents instead of mom and dad. I see, very good. Or family. And then there's a lot of local places that we can go to market or understand the community where we could be involved in that community. Absolutely. There's going to be a local pride committee that works all year round. There might be local organizations that support youth groups. There's, of course, the Chamber of Commerce that's specific to LGBTQ plus community. There's HRC. There's lots of different local organizations or local chapters of national organizations. You can volunteer, be involved in the community, understand the needs and desires, and that's gonna help you better be plugged into what their needs are and how they wanna travel and what they wanna do. And, and I think that that's important. You're giving some resources to them, um, to, to our agent industry, and I think that they want to know how to experience it, how to understand it, and how to market better when it comes to that. Let's talk about some of your recent experiences with clients who have traveled in the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah, well, I recently had uh, about 100 people. In fact, I was the 101st person that I booked on this gay cruise. It was a really good experience. I basically got three group leaders together to build the group, and then it just snowballed from there. It was a great day when I got that commission check. It was the biggest 
paycheck I think I've ever gotten in, in a one week period. Oh my gosh. So. Did you hear that? He took three individual group members and formulated them together to make a successful group. And in the idea of even using past clients' testimonials, right? Now that you have these 100 passengers, you've had clients for a few years, just use those testimonials as a big plus as well. Well, you know, and I didn't say this before, but I'll say it now. I think that's why I got those three group leaders because it was a previous client who had been on that cruise, who had given me a testimonial. I had made a little graphic image of it posted it on my Instagram, and then a couple weeks later, that's when I started getting these people calling me. So there you go. Yeah, I, I mean, think it was attributed to that. Matt, as with any client, qualifying is very, very critical, right? So let's talk about that process and what travel agents should know about qualifying clients in the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah, I mean, first of all, you wanna be personable. You wanna to get to know them. You might even ask them what their preferred pronouns are. But when you're getting into the deeper questions, you know, where do they want to go? What do they want to do? Do they want to travel with others in the LGBTQ plus community? Do they want to travel independently on their own? Are there specific sites that they want to see related to LGBTQ plus history? Uh, what kinds of activities do they want to do? Do they want to do things that are specific to the LGBT community in terms of events? There's a lot of events out there that people go to. There's even specific cruise lines that charter and cater towards this community. So those are the things I would look at first. I, I think it boils down to the idea in the qualifying process about safety. Just that idea that it's comfort and safety, I think is what it boils down to. Yep, it's comfort, it's safety, uh, and it, it's each person's different. Some clients I have, they're not gonna go to certain places because of political reasons and the way the laws are there. They're just not gonna go. Other clients I have, well, that's not a concern. It's more about safety. It's not about the politics of the country. It's if they feel safe. And then there's uh, others that I have, maybe even willing if they really want to go to a destination. And typically these are the more historical places, but they're willing to be extremely discreet in order to go there. So it's good. So that's all part of that qualifying process, yeah. right? So let's talk about suppliers. Let's talk about some of our suppliers that we know are in the industry that we might have relationships with, whether they're preferred or just in our list of suppliers. Who do you think is best for the for this community, depending on whether it's group or individual travel? Yep. Well, the one I was talking about earlier, some people might have guessed it, but it was uh, Atlantis Events. So that's probably one of the biggest ones. That's I, They are, from my understanding, the biggest um, cruise chart that chartering of cruises. Oh, wow. How do you say that? <laughs> cruise charter company? Yeah, or, cruise okay. charter. Right? Then we hear that from uh, Charlie. Oh, yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So they are the largest. Um, Atlantis Events is the largest company that charters cruises out of anything, not just LGBTQ plus community of anything. Um, they're a great one. They also own RSV vaca RSVP Vacations. Uh, one I really like is Brand G Vacations. That tends to be smaller groups. They do river cruising. They do a lot of stuff in Europe. It's a little bit different. It's not as much the party scene as some of these are more party, right? So that's something you would ask your client too. Do you want to go and party on some of these trips and cruises? Or do you want to explore? Or do you want to have an adventure? Uh, you have Olivia. That's more catered towards uh, lesbian groups. So in general, we have suppliers that are that are um, LGBTQ friendly. Yep. Well, um, I mean, a lot of them are all allies and friendly. Now you're gonna, if you go to the gay pride festivals, you're gonna see them there marching with their employees through it. Um, you know, there's Marriott, Hyatt, Hilton, all the big names, Celebrity's a big one. Celebrity Cruise Line. Celebrity Cruise Line, uh, Royal Caribbean, Disney. Uh, Disney oftentimes in the past have had gay days. Uh, Azamara is a good one. And there's also Delta Vacations. They have an online booking site for agents. If you're registered with them, they have a database of LGBTQ plus friendly destinations as well as properties. Fantastic. So Matt, some of the things that we like to talk about are additional resources. These are all acronyms and they're yeah. always, you know, there's so many acronyms in our, in our industry. I-G-L-T-A. Yeah, don't tell me what that stands for. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you, but it's basically, if you go to their website, it has a lot of great insights and tips for LGBTQ plus travelers and where to go, what things they might look out for, um, suppliers as well. It's a resource actually both for travelers and for travel agents. And I know that um, we were able to have the vice president of, of that association 
um, on our um, KHM Today show once, not too long ago. So that's on a YouTube channel. We'll put the link in here as well. And then we have the National LGBT Chamber of Commerce. Yep, so this is more of a business organization. So when I was living in California, I was on the board of the Rainbow Chamber of Commerce there. This is to help you network and build your business and get leads from other people who have businesses too, right? Yeah, so it's very, that's very important. And the U.S. Department of State website also provides information uh, for safety protocols. Yeah, so that's got good information on safety. You can go there if there's any concerns that the State Department has. They're going to list it there, and they're they're great. I met one of the ladies who worked there at an ASTA conference, and she said, you know, this is these are hardline facts. They're just going by the facts and incidents and things that happen, and they're really just there to protect you. Yes. I love that you mentioned ASTA, the American Society of Travel Advisors. There's a lot of information there, and as well with CLIA, Cruise Line International Association as well. All of these are who our host agency partners with in order to get that information out to our agent community. So one final one is GLAD and the Trevor Project. Yeah, so those are great if you're looking at um, community events, what things are coming up in the calendar. You can go to those sites and reach out to them to get involved, but also just to see when the events are occurring in different places in the country and even around the world. So our marketing department here at KHM Travel Group has um, so many available resources on that, correct? There's graphics, videos, blog posts that are out there on that, so they can look those up and find those as well. You know, I didn't even know about the blogs until we were just talking about this, but I knew about the graphics, I knew about the videos, and so I do send those out. I love those. I go in once a month and check and see what's there and grab the graphics I want and put them on Instagram and, and post the videos to my YouTube channel. Awesome. Once again, thank you again for watching Travel Agent Tips. We hope that you're learning a lot from this. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Give us those top three tips then for our agents moving forward. Yeah, so remember, you wanna send your clients to destinations where your clients will feel welcome, they'll feel safe, and pay particular attention to the needs. They just wanna get out there like anybody else and explore and have fun. Thank you again, Matt, and we hope that you continue to be successful in the travel industry, especially as one of our top producers here at KHM Travel Group. Please remember to comment below what travel agent tips you want to hear in the future. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you again so much for watching.